Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now if you've signed up to the Windows Insider program that lets you test out any updates and new features before they're released to the public then you may already have the latest build 15019. Perhaps the biggest change is the addition of the new gaming category under the settings option which allows you to try out the new game mode. Simply put, this new feature boosts in-game performance by disabling background tasks and allocating resources towards the game itself, giving these games priority and consistency. If we flick the switch here and jump into a game, then bring up the Windows game bar, we can turn it on as simple as that, and if you minimise the game then it will dynamically disable itself. For those of you who have a system that is capable of playing games with decent settings and high frame rates, it may not be a feature that appeals to you, but for us budget gamers it may mean the difference between playable and non-playable, and Microsoft themselves have said that those are the sort of systems that this feature is best used with. I'd also like to point out that they have said the difference won't be huge, but as I said before, a few frames may make all the difference. So we're using an X4 860K and 750 Ti system today, a great example of a budget gaming PC. We pushed each game settings right up and have run each one twice for half an hour with game mode off and then game mode on and noted the average and minimum FPS for each. So let's start with Fallout 4 and the high settings preset. Specifically in the Diamond City area, the most demanding area of the game, we saw an average of 38 frames per second with game mode off. There were some noticeable frame drops in some areas as well as increases. With game mode on, our average came back at 41, which is a negligible difference, but then again that's still a difference, so let's move on to the next title. Skyrim Remastered up next, on the high preset with 1080p resolution, and we saw an average of 45 frames per second throughout our playtime. There weren't any nasty hiccups here, and switching to game mode we saw 47, two frames more, but it's still a difference like I said before. With Microsoft saying that the difference would be small, it can be hard to tell if it's just coincidence or not. So next up we tried Watch Dogs 2, I was going to do GTA 5 here, but for some reason I woke up this morning and the game decided to give me the not responding error. And so it's going to take me a couple of days to reinstall about six discs. So Watch Dogs 2 here on the medium preset at 1080p. And we're seeing about 40 FPS on average with the game mode switched off. When we turn it on we see an increase of about 2-3 to three FPS once again. And the game sits at around 43. A nice little improvement. But Watch Dogs 2 does seem to stutter with both game mode off and on. But I think that's just to do with optimization of the game as I've experienced that on higher end hardware as well. Finally we tried Rocket League, a less demanding game that we were able to put on the highest settings with MLAA on. With the game mode off we hit 55 on average whereas game mode gave us 56. This time it was a slightly smaller increase but our minimum FPS also improved as it has done in all previous tests. Overall it's early days and I can definitely see the potential for software like this. It's similar to those third party game boosters that you can download but the fact that it's going to become a fully fledged Windows feature means that you don't have to download anything to use it. All you need is Windows 10. At the moment it's hard to say if it makes much difference with 1 to 3 frames being the average and the factors and changes in gameplay could have easily bought that on. I think we could have ruled out coincidence if we were seeing at least 10 frames difference and there's nothing really to show you it's working aside from ticking the little box. As I said though, Microsoft have mentioned that you wouldn't be seeing a significant increase so maybe these results are exactly as they should be. I'm not sure it's worth signing up for the Insider Preview for though, and we may still see further improvements by the time this update is finalised. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you've had any experience with the new game mode from Microsoft, and you've got the latest Insider Preview, let me know if it's made a difference with your games, and if so, what sort of difference you've seen. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.